giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. FRC Top 25 2019 Week 1, the 25th ranked team is team number 624. From Katy, Texas and Cinco Ranch High School, it's Kryptonite. Dude, this just brings back so many like just doing this. It doesn't it? like <laughs> just back into your back into your basement and stuff. Heck like yeah. it's, just, it's just so great. <laughs> so Kryptonite has a record of 15 and four, and they were the winners this past weekend at the Austin District event. So 624 was uh, selected to the number two alliance, and then we'll go on to win the to the win the event in three matches. Um, Kryptonite is just um just a team that is here, you know, week in and, and week out, and I'm really really excited to see how Texas. Um, just handles and, and does in this district model. And I think that being said in the district model, we're just going to see Kryptonite just that much more. I mean, I, I feel like we see them after every event that they that they play. Um, they're always up there, you know, uh, <clears throat> definitely in the elimination matches, always up there usually, I feel like, in, you know, winning or, or semifinalists or finalists. So um, Kryptonite is just off to a good start here at number 25, and we'll see how, how they do going forward in, in the district model in um, uh, first in Texas. So. And by coincidence, their ELO is also 25. So oh, there you go. Out, that worked out pretty well. Wow, perfect. Cool. All right, so we appear to have a bit of a tie here at 23. Ooh. So if Mike wants to take this part. Sure. There's so, a tiebreaker, by the way. All right. So for tied for – Justin, did you switch these two? I don't, I don't, <laughs> when I don't you said know. you switched these two, never – okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, so tied for – Tied for 23rd in the 24th spot is Team 319. From Alton, New Hampshire, and Prospect Mountain High School, it's Big Bad Bob. 11 and 6 overall. We're the semifinalists at the H and H District event. 319 played hard all event long, but really excited playing the cargo game or placing cargo, finishing second overall at the event in cargo scoring, and ending up getting selected to the number four alliance. In the eliminations, however, the group was able to dispatch the number five alliance before eventually falling to that pesky number one alliance in the semifinals. So a great start for 319. And you can catch them again at their next event, which is the Southern New Hampshire District event. Uh, ELO at 29. You're going to see that the, that the uh, difference between these is that the tiebreaker is whoever has whoever has higher ELO uh, will win the tiebreaker. So I said that because um, Justin and I were starting our our writing earlier today. I was doing it in one place, he was doing it in another, and like I had me going first, he had him going first, and then he said he had switched those two. So I was just making sure we had him in the right gotcha, in the right gotcha, order. Gotcha. Right in the right yeah. order still. So all right. So oh, oh no. <laughs> that's bad <laughs> already, man. Our house was almost on fire. <laughs> Luckily the battery's just low. <laughs> Oof, it keeps building. Um, yeah, I know. All right. In the twenty third spot, Mike's going back to Texas to talk that's about three thousand five. From Dallas, Texas, and Jay Conrad High School, it's the Robo Chargers. They have an overall record of 14 and 7. They also competed at the Austin event, and they were finalists there. So ranking fifth, they would capture the number five alliance, and they would take out number four um, and number one on the way to the silver for the event. So a playoff record, a playoff record of of five and f- I can't be right. Playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> like a, oh no, it can't be right. Yeah, playoffs. a playoff re- <laughs> playoff record of five and four. That's crazy. That's right. That's yeah, right. take yeah, taking it to um taking it to three matches in the quarters, three in the semis, and yeah. then three in the finals, and then losing one, one, and two. So that, that's crazy. Um, but so just awesome work to three thousand five Robo Chargers, just another team down there in in the district model in Texas. And you know, already to start, they have twenty one matches, you know. And I just I love seeing that. We always mention it every year about how all these teams just get so much more playing time than teams, a, a lot of teams in, in the region, in the regional model that um, only compete at regional. So I'm um, grass to 3,005. They'll also be um, at Greenville coming up. So uh, uh, congrats and good luck, and good luck to them going forward. Yep. And the ELO ranking in 21st. Uh, just to answer a quick question. Uh, I believe Caleb will be posting the full list of ELOs on Chief Delphi. So make sure you check uh, if you're looking for the raw ELO scores. Uh, this should be. I also believe, by the way, that 1619 will be posting the reveal video uh, quite soon, maybe even during the show. Uh, so make sure you take a look at that, guys. I prefer that you go give them props instead of clipping ours because uh, they deserve the views. So make sure once Absolutely. that gets uh, submitted that you go and uh, watch the full reveal video on there. For sure. All right, so that was our our tie for 23rd, and our 22nd spot is Team 95. 
from White River Junction, Vermont. Ooh, sounds like a beautiful place. And the <laughs> Hartford Area Career and Tech Center, it's Grasshoppers. 11, 4, and 2 overall were the semifinals of the Granite State District event. So Team 95, whose build season we've been able to track all year long on Chief Delphi. They do that kind of open build season, um, which is really cool. It's something that I know a lot of people track and see. They played their first event, and they were the captains of the number three alliance. Propelling them to their highest seed was their Sandstorm driving and overall smart play that saw them earn nine wins, which is the third most at the event. They were limited, however, in the semifinals by the number two alliance, but no doubt a great showing, and you can catch them again at the North Shore District event next week, which is week when I say next week, I mean week three. Um, but, Mike, I didn't know if it were a tower, if you guys had a chance to see it. But all season long, I was kind of keeping track of what 95 was doing. Because what they do on Chief Delphi post in their, uh, oh, yeah. their the progress blog, is pretty right? cool. Yeah, the build blog is cool. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't really follow it religiously too much. I definitely mm -hmm. uh, picked it up occasionally. But I think it's a great idea to, to look at something like that uh, and to just show off more. And I think some people look at us uh, kind of like, oh, you know, at premiere night, we got to see secretive. That's definitely not the case. Uh, you can still uh, do a lot of stuff and still submit for Premier Night if that's what you're interested in. Uh, but props to 95 for just for just being totally transparent and showing off what they're doing and also making a pretty good robot, too. Kind of helps with that as well. Absolutely. So, Mike, I don't know what it is. <laughs> all your, you're just down in Texas. For that's all it. These, I know. Three these, straight. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, in the in the 21st spot, we have team number 2714. <laughs> From Dallas, Texas, and Jesuit College Prep, the Hockaday School, Ursuline Academy of Dallas, School for the Talented and Gifted, St. Mark's School of Texas, and Plano West Senior High School, it's Team Barbecue. They have an overall record of 11 and 10 at their first event, <laughs> 21 matches again. And they were finalists at the Austin event as well. We just talked about their... Um, their counterpart there. So three straight Austin event teams for me, barbecue, which we had posted. I'm going into this weekend. They have a, a really cool um, battery naming system for their robot. Um, in case you didn't see it, they, you know, instead of like putting numbers or letters on, on all their, on all their batteries, um, since their, their team name is team barbecue, they use barbecue <laughs> they sides. sides. Yeah. yeah. So it's like <laughs> cream corn, Mac and cheese, uh, like all these other ones. So it's just really, really unique. So, um, so they ranked 17th and they were selected by 3000, um, five, the robot charges that we just talked about on the, on that fifth Alliance. Um, the robot name is brisket. <laughs> no, I think they use that, the, the term brisket for the brisket, um, looks and <laughs> plays really well in, in the deep space game. So, um, they took away that finalist medal there, and they'll compete again uh, at the Plano District District event coming up. So, um, good start for 2714. I know um, Greg Nidell is on that team in mentoring. So, from uh, Rev Robotics, and uh, good luck to them going forward. And I think so, it's definitely a team I'll be uh, I'll be looking out for because I just mm -hmm. I'm intrigued by it for sure. This is one of the outliers of the LO, by the way. I noticed that there uh, big difference on what the community thought. Uh, versus uh, what yellow uh, stated is one right is one wrong. Well, that's up to you to decide. Uh, but barbecue, congrats to them for 21st. Something I also want to mention. I, I think we kind of talk about the snubs later, Mike. Uh, or uh, not that we this have. week. Not yeah, this week, but but we do week. have snubs every week. There are going to be teams that, uh, if you look at barbecue, I think they were knocked on the semis, right? Um, mm -hmm. There's going to be teams that win events that don't get in the top 20. There are finals. Final, sorry. Uh, but there's going to be teams that you know win events and don't get on the top 25 and uh because you know this is going to be regionally biased occasionally uh basically we have more voters from one region or the other and all we can say to you is get more people from your region to vote uh, and Absolutely. that's that's the best we can do for that um and that's why we also do the top 10 in each region so you can kind of see uh regionally how each team does as well mm -hmm. absolutely so tower do you say that the yellow takes into account previous performance like in prior years uh or is that just for this year so I was just was wondering if that explains the outlier for barbecue, because even though they're a 2700 level team, they're actually mm -hmm. a rookie team. So they have no previous history. Yeah. Um, so so, I didn't so know if that was. Well, this is what I, I, I don't think it was based off of what the, the previous team they spun off of was. It just says uh, it says that Kale's model adjusts ratings a bit by taking a weighted average of each team's end of season ELO rating for their past two seasons. So I'm going to yeah. guess that because they're a new team that they might not have been able to jump that high in the rankings in one yeah, week. I'm not 100% sure, but just knowing how how ELO or whatever you want to call it uh, <laughs> works, uh, that would be my guess. Uh, somebody in chat can probably correct me on it, but that, that's my guess for this. Cool. Awesome. So that was uh, our 21st ranked team. Moving forward, our 20th ranked team is team 3309. From Anaheim, California, Cornelia Connolly Severate 
Sir, or Servite, sorry, and Rosary High School. This is the Firebots. 10 and 5 overall were the semifinalists at the Orange County Regional. So at, at OCR, the Firebots ranked 12th and were selected to the number 3 alliance. They teamed up with former world champs 294, but ultimately found the semifinals to the number 2 alliance. No, excuse me. All is not lost, however, as 3309 was able to pick up their fourth Chairman's Award in a row, um, wow. which is huge congratulations to them. And they'll play again in a few weeks at the Los Angeles Regional and then finish up their season in Vegas. Tower, you'll be in Vegas, right? I will be, yeah. Week five, man. Looking forward to it. Very yeah, fun. that'll be awesome. And you'll see the Friar Bots there. Yeah. The Friar Bots. All right, so moving on to the 19th ranked team, we have team 4481. From Eindhoven, Nord Brabant, Netherlands, it's team Rembrandt's. They have an overall record of 10 and 5, and they were the semifinalists at the Orange County Regional, and also where they won the Engineering Inspiration Award. Congrats to them. So they have a really nice looking robot. They always, always do. Um, we love you know checking them out whenever they release just a you know nice aesthetically pleasing robot on top of like a really good robot as well. Um, this year they have a really nice um, have three climb, and on on blue lines you can see a lot of like first person um, videos from the robots perspective, which is really cool. Like that was popular I think like when GoPros first came out or like mm -hmm. became like less expensive. A lot more teams had them and used them, but so it's kind of like I think it's it's cool. I think it's like kind of making. It kind of remaking its appearance, especially in this game when you can't see anything <laughs> on, on the, um, you know, on the, on the webcast. So uh, very cool for them. They'll compete. They're staying, I think, I'm guessing they're staying uh, stateside um, as they compete again this weekend in San Diego, another California event. So I accept them um, to improve on that semifinalist appearance at, at um, Orange County and uh, do well there in San Diego. So good luck to them. Something um, I just want to say about the Rembrandts and, uh, we brought this up in the West Region recap yesterday, so I want to I want to pitch something. You guys get your opinion on this. So, Rembrandt's won Engine Inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? They're not from the United States, which means they don't get their championship registration paid for by NASA. Interesting. So, I have a proposal. I want to I want to get your opinion on. Mm -hmm. Since nobody's getting the five grand, why don't either you let the Rembrandts pick a United States team to give the five grand to at the event, or let the judges pick a team? that would then receive the $5,000. Because, like, we can't do anything about, like, giving the five grand to, a, you know, a team that's in the Netherlands, government, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, should the five grand, should should that just disappear? Or just, I don't know, that's first. So this is really what interesting. Happens. So like, what what's the logistics that they can't on first? Fun gets all on claim EI money. I agree. Yeah, I'll, right. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> so what what's the logistics that they can't, can't first just waive their, like, can't, can't first in, um, who puts it? Who gives it? NASA, right? Can't can't they like just have like a like can't they just waive it on behalf of NASA this team? I, I don't know for like the the very minute. Oh, does it happen with the Israel the Israel um district events as well? Those teams don't. Yeah, qualify? I would think so. I just see for the for the small minority teams. Why can't first just waive that? Like, yeah, okay, you would have had this paid for. You know, five grand to us isn't going to make or break championship, so you can come. You don't have to pay. That's what I would do. But you're right. So that still leaves $5,000 out there from NASA that NASA had allocated. So what do you do with that money? That's a, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't have an answer. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah, we'll right. see what people say. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And, uh, DM. Got lost in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's one from the ages. Got lost in the chat there. Thanks, Nick, for keeping us <laughs> in line there. So that was 19th with 4481. Their ELO ranking was 29. Thank you, Nick. 29, yeah. And uh, so moving on to our 18th ranked team, that's going to be team 1807. New team alert from Allentown, New Jersey. Allentown High School, it's Redbird Robotics, 12 and 8 overall, were the finalists at the H&H &H District event. Uh, so the ranking seventh in the qualification matches, the performance of 1807 highlighted by their excellence in cargo scoring, caught the attention of the number one seed, 2539, and them, along with 2559, would compete in the elimination rounds. I'm, I know I'm saying elimination rounds. I know it's playoffs. I'm just, I'm an old dog, so it's just, it's just going to have to be this way. <laughs> That's right. The alliance played well, moving through the eliminations bracket before falling in the finals in finals match three by just eight points. So a lot of great matches there at Hepper Horsham, uh, but a great start to their district season. And 1807 will play next at the Seneca District event. Mike, do you remember when they first switched from uh, or they first started doing regional or district events, and we called every district event a regional, and we got crushed by the oh Michigan, always by the yeah. Michigan people every single time. <laughs> they were ruthless people. Are yeah. Ruthless. 
ruthless. So, uh, funny story. There was one of my students um, in one of our in one of our boards. She had posted that she was from Hapor Horsham High School or something like that. I was like, wait a second, were you on the robotics team? And then she's like, no, I never heard of it until like my younger brother was four years younger. Like, was thinking about doing it, but he never did. So, small world. It was cool. Yeah. All right, so moving on to the 17th ranked team, we have team 1718. From Armada, Michigan, and Macomb Academy of the Arts, it's the Fighting Pie. They have an overall record of 17 and 1. 17 and 1. Nice. So this could be maybe qualify for a snub of the week here, um, here at 17th. But they were the winners of the Gibraltar District event. So 18 matches for them to start out the 2019 17 18. Another team that we just consistently talk about here in the top 25. Uh, they teamed up with the number one alliance there. I think they were ranked third, I believe, uh, even at even at um, I think only one loss. Uh, but the number one alliance, um, 1023 and 6081, and they went undefeated in the Olympics to take the event win there. Um, so congratulations to them. They'll competing. Uh, they have a little break here, but they'll be competing again in week five um, at the Troy District event up there in Michigan. So they, they were ranked uh, fifth in quals, by the way. Fifth. OK, cool. Yeah. Thank you. At what? Eleven and one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. So that, that took me a little bit by surprise, but that just shows you, um, you know, Michigan is tough and with the ranking score and, and, you know, luck of the draw sometimes of what you get on your team and everything. Um, but congrats to them. Fighting pie always up here, always talking about them. So congrats. Michigan is beyond tough. <laughs> Michigan's <laughs> yes. brutal. Yeah, for sure. Brutal. All right. So moving on to our 16th ranked team, that's going to be team 88. From Bridgewater, Massachusetts, it's TJ Squared with an overall record of 12, 6, and 1. They were the finalists of the Granite State District event. So with an, uh, finishing fifth at the end of qualification matches, they were selected to the number two alliance and would take home the silver uh, to the number one alliance. Beauty of the district motto is the amount of play, and 88 has Southeast Massachusetts and Central Massachusetts still to play, and then, of course, the district championship. So good luck to Team 88, TJ Squared. Much you remember playing against them at Chesapeake? In oh, absolutely. 2011. 100%. We're playing no, with, we're them. with them. Yeah, yeah, with them. Yeah. yeah that was a yeah, great alliance. Them. Yeah, that was cool. That was it was just like one of those alliances that I uh, was just so close to like having that magic, you know. But yeah, um, yeah that's a team I'll I'll always remember for sure. Something and, interesting to point out is that you know they took they didn't win the event, but ELO shows them at twelve, right? So it just tells you that their 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 strength of schedule and how they yeah. did perform against that, you know, just really exhibits how good of a team they are. I mean, I know like the district um just to switch gears, the district thing has been like, you know, beaten to death, but just the mentality of like, just going into like knowing you have three district events, just like the pressure, I feel like that can be off. Um, you know, just if you go to one, one regional, two regionals even, you know, but you have three district events plus the district championship. Um, you know, I think there's just, I think that there's a whole, a whole cool dynamic to that. So hopefully more areas will, will be coming that in the future. Go we'll show. We'll show. All right. Quickly moving through this list, it seems uh, already to 15, and Mike's going to talk about Team 41 or 4414. This also might be my new favorite team, um, <laughs> Justin, because it's like a Seinfeld reference. But from Ventura, California, it's High Tide. High Todd. High Tide. Uh, high Tide. <laughs> I thought uh, was an overall record of 16 and three. They were the winners of the Del Mar Regional. Um, so I, again, I think just welcome to the top 25. I don't believe we don't have a master list. Maybe we, we should, or could look back, but, um, I don't think they've ever been on the top 25, um, here for high tide. Um, so great robot. They have a have three climb here and, uh, they'll compete again coming up in here in Ventura, but for 15th, debuting at 15th, um, with, with what I believe is, is their first go at it, um, is, is incredible. So a great record to start and, uh, they'll be competing again here in shortly, but, um, congratulations to High Tide on, on your debut. Somebody said they're a rookie. So I was wondering that because. Yeah, they're, they're a spinoff team, I think, or something like that. And but yeah, this, this this was their first event ever. And 44-15, I thought, was also. Uh, they have some history, so I don't know. Look at all. But, look at these chatters. But they, were both, they were both yeah. in the same event lines. Well, I don't know if you guys have, a, have had a chance to see 44-14's robot. So. Our, um, my team, I did not get a chance to look at it. Today. We we build white, we powder coat robots white, and we use oh, a dark blue because that. that's our school colors. Um, so it was nice to see another robot, but they highlight with uh, a really a beautiful teal. So the robot, first time I saw it, obviously a, a rookie team here, uh, but the first time I saw it on the stream, I was like, wow, that is a beautiful robot, mm -hmm. and it really is. It really yeah, is it well is done. Nice. Yeah, they do have their picture up on uh, TBA as well too. So I just put the link. Uh, you can check it out on TBA if you like. Cool. Yeah, this will be this will be like. One of the teams of the season, I think, watching this one. So yeah, 
Very good. What, we got, we got does anybody know what they spin off of? No, I don't like, know. I, I wonder, Chad, if you know, uh, let us know what team they spun off of. I'd be interested in hearing. So it's also, it's interesting because when when uh, when I was at Churchville Chile with my good friend Mike Stark, um, and we were on Team 340, we started two teams in the same high school. And I don't know like if that's after, high tide. After the fact. Yeah, after, after the, fact. the fact. So Like years even later. Though, yeah, even though our new team, 424, was a rookie team, they made us pick a team number from when Team 340 was first started. So it might not be uh, a spinoff team necessarily so much as a second team at the same school or something like that. But Well, they said it is, it is a spinoff of 3925, which is uh, Circuit of Life, which is, I don't believe I've heard of that team before. So, um, wow, spinoff, and you, you win an event and completely dominate yeah. right away. And, and as a rookie from an ELO, that once again explains that 133 ELO most likely uh, yeah. because as a first event, their ELO hasn't had a chance to rise up high enough. So that's that's pretty darn good if you ask me. Yep. As it says, as a community team, so no high school. So maybe just from the area when all the, the new teams in that area maybe. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, see, so he just posted. Somebody else just posted it. Cool. All right. High tide. High tide. Uh, you on our list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to our 14th ranked team. That's going to be Team 2468. From Austin, Texas, Westlake High School. It's Team Appreciate, 14 and 5 overall. And we're the winners of the Austin District event. So 2468 was the captain of the number two alliance with an RS average of point or 2.08 and an eight and four record. The Alliance faced little trouble until the finals where we saw some of the best matches of the weekend. In finals match three, Team Appreciate was able to take the win. They also picked up the Chairman's Award for our my our first double cling bling. Double Ayo. blue? Double gold cling bling? Do we have that emote still? Yeah, we do. Just put it we, we still have Mike it, yes. On it. <laughs> so, I, only, I forgot yeah. about it. I was checking out Region Recap yesterday. And I was seeing them all in the chat. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about these. So the cling bling is a thing we started years ago. But Years ago. Mike, do you want to – should we explain where the, the origins of cling bling? Um, okay, so we can. So um, cling bling started back in – I don't remember what year it was, but when we were in 340, they still are. 1962. Yeah, right. Back <laughs> in <my> – <laughs> Nixon's 1962. Not that old. <laughs> um, but we were like a very – like we were a very high chairman team. Like we won chairman's a lot or, or EI or something like that. And we, and we won a lot of silvers for robots. So I can't remember if it was gold, silver, silver, gold, whatever. Usually how we, how we, how we do it. Right. Actually, I don't even know how we do it. Is it win? And then, yeah, I think it's robot wise first and then either chairman's or engineering inspiration. So um, that year we had won, I don't remember which combination, but I think it was our first year had winning, you know, having a robot medal, you go through the yeah. line and then you go back through for your EI or your chairman's. So, um, that was the first year, like, you know, everybody's wearing their, everybody's wearing their, their medals. And then as you were like walking back, right. They're like starting the next award or whatever, still quiet. Yeah. Like everybody's medals are like clinging off clink, each clink, other. Clink, 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 yeah. clink. <laughs> so, so it was like really loud, but it's like the best noise ever. So we yeah. just started calling it like cling bling from, from there. And then it just kind of has caught on. We always say it now. Other people are saying it, I feel like, but, um, yeah. but yeah, that's it. So back to team appreciate what they're. Yes. Double gold so, cling bling. Double gold cling bling. The rarest of all the cling blings. Uh, so <laughs> yes. And just to remind everyone, they were a Chambers Award finalist at the Houston Championship last mm -hmm. year. And I don't think it's any uh, surprise to see that they're on my short list and a lot of others to really enter the Hall of Fame. And in my opinion, you yeah. couldn't find a more deserving team. Oh, yeah. Uh, team Appreciate is phenomenal. Um, so a great start to their season. And good luck to Team 2468. Team Appreciate. We actually did a, uh, we had uh, one of our correspondents, uh, Nikki, who was uh, out and seen at the event they were at, actually did a, a behind the bumpers uh, this weekend talking uh, with 2468 a bit about uh, the robot. And then, of course, uh, I mean, their amazing chairman's efforts uh, that they do as well. So I'll post the link in chat, but go go ahead and check that out uh, when you get an opportunity, because it's uh, pretty awesome just to hear from teams, like, you know, truly legendary teams like this. Uh to really, uh, you know, get an in-depth experience with them. A lot of times when we do things, it's very robot-centric, and this has some robot, but you definitely get to hear more about their uh, efforts that they do in the community and great things to learn from if you're interested in winning EI or chairmans or something like that as well. Yeah, yeah. and Team Appreciate is just one of those teams, they just have it all, right? They have they have good robots. They have good the chairman side of it. They have Coach a good Norm, team. yeah. 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 Coach good, Norm's a great guy. Yeah. Just a great guy. <laughs> yeah. And like team image, you know what I mean? Like they're they're embracing their number and their name and just everything is just so well rounded with them. So congratulations to them. Faux show. 
All right, so moving into 13th, I'm just going to remind everyone we're going to take a break at the, uh, after the, before the top 10 and then again before the top 5. Uh, before we get there, we got to stop at 13 and talk about Team 1023. From Temperance, Michigan and Bedford Senior High School, it's the Bedford Express. Justin, I'm getting all these like top 25 staples. I like, know. This, is, this is another one. Bedford Express is just another team that year in, year out is just always here up on the top 25. So they have an overall record of the, in the 2019 season of 16 and 2. They were the winners of the Gibraltar event in FIM. Um, and so, again, just year in and year out, Bedford is just a consistent force in Michigan. Now the top 25, they're just here. They are again. So they took the number one seed. They selected 17-18, who I just talked about a little bit ago. And goodbye to the rest of the field. <laughs> <laughs> Level three have climbed from them and just nice gameplay overall to seal the victory. Uh, another district event coming up at Jackson um, for the 10-23 before Michigan State Championship. So good luck to, to Bedford Express. What uh, want- district are they in? Tim, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Bedford, I think the last couple of years, they, they had a decent robot last year, but uh, they really came out swinging this year. And it's really cool to see them uh, just perform as, as well as they have so far. And I, I think uh, as an elite team, Bedford is in FIM. I think this will, this is a great, uh, uh, maybe perhaps rebound year already for them. I mean, they already, they did win a district last year. So it's always tough when you have elite level teams to say rebound, but uh, definitely coming out swinging and looking really, really strong. What am I, it's probably one they, they choose to forget. But one of my strongest memories of Bedford, I think one of the first times we heard about Bedford, I think it was 2013 with um, Frisbees. I can't remember the name. Mm-hmm. And when they, they, they fell, yeah, when, when they fell off the pyramid. Remember mm-hmm. that? That's like just that, that's like I think my oldest memory of Bedford. And I think that's kind of like when we first started seeing them. And hey, they had a level, you know, they had the, I don't remember what the level three climb, whatever it was back then. Yeah. Um, you know, so and then I think ever since then, 2013, they, we've just been seeing them year in year out. So Absolutely. Yeah. And on 3015, we got a chance to play with them in 2016 in Pittsburgh. Um, and it was just really awesome to have that experience. And a team from Michigan, like like we talked about earlier in the show, like if you're in Michigan, it's a competitive district. So it's you know to see them bring that competitive mentality to a regional in an area that you know kind of wasn't used to that that Pittsburgh competitiveness and to see how they run their elimination strategy and all that stuff was really a great learning experience for our team yeah very cool nice all right so moving on to number 12 um we have team 5687 wait is Nick wants us to speed up. I think. No, that I was know. me. I put that. <laughs> so Tower wants us to speed up. All right. We're running a little bit behind. Yeah, From Portland, cool. Maine, the Baxter Academy for Tech and Sciences, it's the Outliers, seventeen <laughs> one overall for the winners of the Granite State District event. So this is a team we've talked about more and more on the show, and they've started off 2019 about as about as good as you can. After competing in a Week Zero event, they came out swimming in their fir- swinging in their first real event, losing just one qualification match and earning a 2.58 ranking score. They were scooped up by the number one seed, 1519, and went on to win the event. A dominating performance, and they hope to keep their season going Week Four at the Greater Boston District event. Good luck to Team 5687, the Outliers. Nice <laughs> Thanks, work. dude. We're gonna keep it going. <laughs> Sure, I'm talking a little fast, but <laughs> we sitting told right you, at 14th for ELO, we, too. We told you yeah. this was a package deal. You get, <laughs> you get Justin, you get Mike, you get our late, you get our late start, and you get our late end. So, that's right. <laughs> Mike and Justin in the morning starts at night, ends in the morning. In the morning. There you that's go. right. Nick's got a, right. Nick's got an early flight, so we got to get going. We do got to get going. All right, the 11th ranked team bus is ride. team number 3538 from Auburn Hills, Michigan, in Avondale High School. It's the Robo Jackets with an overall record of 16 and two. They were the winners at the Southfield district event this past weekend so the robot jackets would finish second overall with a 2.5 ranking score average and they were selected by the number one team um ever heard of them the killer bees um with scores ranging from 65 to 85 the robot jackets would take the win in six matches they have two more district events kind of like i talked about earlier um and we'll see them again at goal lake and alpina number two coming up before michigan state championship so congrats to 35 38 the robo jackets all right, so we'll take a quick break here at um, number ten. Um, were you going to do the the drawing here, Tyler? Yeah, we can do we can do a drawing for it for the three sixteen uh, Lunatech shirt. Uh, so the winner of that is going to be uh, Storm Crow four four nine, who is a nice. subscriber. You know what that means? Rigged emotes and chats because. Strong Coast is a subscriber. We rigged it for them clearly. That's just the way we roll here on fun. But congratulations, uh, Stormcrow, uh, for winning. Please make sure, once again, you reach out. Uh, send first updates now, 8 p.m. on Twitch uh, or in our Discord. Uh, and we need your uh, mailing information. And since it's a shirt, we also need your size as well, too. Mm-hmm. So please make sure you provide that uh, as well. <laughs> for sure. Um, 
Actually, can we can we start the next giveaway right away? Is that all right? Yeah, let's do it. For sure. Okay. Uh, so the next one is going to be uh, actually the 4610 shirt, I think, or did I put the Bad Hawks? I forget off the top of my head. I'm not looking. Nick's got Bad Hawks. Uh, okay. Cute can up. we do the 4610 shirt, Nick? Is that okay? Um, yep, that's fine. I, I, I did not put in the... Uh, uh, the picture, that's my bad on that. So, but we are going to do the 4610 shirt uh, next. And the keyword uh, for that is going to be uh, Ursa Major, um, which I think is the name of their robot off the top of my head. But if I'm wrong about that, sorry. But uh, Ursa Major, uh, just like how it's typed in the chat. Ah, uh, uh, Nick, just so you know, I, uh, I, you did, I did just very recently put the uh, put the picture in. So we can show that afterwards as well, too, because I just added that. Uh, into the uh, file folder. So, but we'll show that. Uh, Ursa Major is what you need to win a 4610 uh, t-shirt. And thanks a lot to 4610 for that uh, giveaway. Very cool. Awesome. So I just wanted to, I think there's a couple of just quick things that we want to talk about. The first thing I wanted to say is I just wanted to thank Zach Orr um, for his work on the, the Blue Alliance app for iOS. It's something that um, we have not had for years, ever since the iOS or ever since the Android app came out, you know, years ago at this point. So Zach has worked incredibly hard on this and has done beta testing, all this stuff. And I use it today for show prep. Um, and it is awesome. It is really cool. Um, there's a lot of cool features with it. So I just wanted to publicly thank him for all his work. I know there's, um, it was like, it debuted, I think it was like 13 or something at other, or he had put, he had tweeted about it, but it had done really well with a lot of people downloading it. So if you do not have it for iOS yet, make sure you download it because it is, it is great. So Justin, that being said, um, what are your thoughts and Tyler, what are your quick thoughts on deep space? What do you like? What don't you like? Um, you know, from, from what we saw at week one or what you think will change or anything like that? Um, I, I'm just going to be honest, as we always are on the show, there wasn't a lot about it I liked. <laughs> I thought it was very slow, uh, pretty boring, actually. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of cause for excitement. I mean, the, the third level climbs, some of them were exciting, but most teams are pretty good at it. Um, yeah. There's not too much. Um, there's not too much there. So I think it'll get better. I mean, obviously, week one, everyone's learning how to play the game for the first time. And we always, I feel like go through this evolution where, you know, we, we see the game, we kind of like hum and ha about it, but as it, as it, you know, as we get the shenanigans going and we get the upper level play, the game certainly improves. So I'm excited to see where it's going to go. Uh, but it wasn't necessarily the most exciting to watch this past weekend. Well, and not only the most exciting to watch from what you could see, you know, I think that was, that was a, a big thing. You like, there was, it was hard to, to see, you know, you could kind of, guess what was going on on the other side of the cargo ship you know if somebody had gotten a hatch panel from a human player station and was over on that side um and if you know you can watch the bottom and the, and the prompts and stuff but you know it's hard to see over there i don't know if we'll see different camera angles as we um go forward with different district events especially maybe trying different different camera angles up in in the rafters and the lightings and in the truss systems i don't know but tyler what'd you think so uh one thing that inspired me, I talked about this in Finalysis a little bit, is I watched the uh, PNW uh, Mount Vernon District event. And if you get an opportunity, watch some of the playoffs for that. Um, I really thought that they that you got a better glimpse of what Destination D Space could look like. I mean, week one always kind of sucks, right? Like yeah. every single year, yeah, yeah. it's always slow. Teams are slow. But you know what? Uh, I thought we actually saw a decent amount of scoring this year. I mean, Power Up last year, uh, not one of my favorite games by any means. But even that was a little bit slow, even picking up mm -hmm. cubes and placing them on switches. And... Power up, uh, you know, compared to if I look at compared to this year, you know, we are seeing a decent amount of scoring. We're starting to see some uh, completed rockets already, which is pretty cool. Um, I, I think the game aesthetically is just kind of boring to look at personally. Uh, the the climbs at the end can be cool. There's some cool dramatic effects to that. So I'm, I'm willing to still give it a chance. Uh, mm -hmm. it, the first day I watched it, I kind of wrote it off right away. But then uh, after watching that PW event and uh, Ontario was really good too, uh, I got a little bit of hope back uh, for Destination Deep Space. I agree. I think, yeah. you know, as we all said, you know, week one is always slow. I think if you look back, you know, we always kind of say that it's like, man, but I think we're all hopeful that it'll get a little better. Um, and I think, you know, as teams figure out their robots, figure out this game, um, we'll see a little bit different side to it, but yeah, I, I'm kind of with you guys. It's just kind of meh for the first week. Um, you know, it's not, it doesn't keep your attention. You know, you got like, you got four or five streams up at home, you know, it's like, you know, it's not too exciting that you just can't wait to the next match or, you know, something like that. But, um, but yeah, no, I, I agree with you guys there. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.